A Banksy piece sold at auction for nearly $13 million. And it's not so much the price tag that we care about, it's what the sale represents, because it's the first time crypto was accepted as a payment option for physical art, at least according to Sotheby's. Last month, the auction house also announced non-fungible tokens will soon become part of what it puts under the hammer. Roger Dickeman is CEO of Artifacts, a new digital art and NFT platform, and he joins me now to talk more about this. Roger, thanks for being here. We're not sure if last night's frenzied 14 minutes bidding battle actually involved crypto, but it's clear that Sotheby's, one of the world's biggest auctioneers, wants to be playing in this space. Why is that? It's the space to be. I mean, NFTs are the future. The digital art space in general needed a marketplace. The NFT is that marketplace, so it's here to stay. My three value propositions there, fine art, utility, and access, they are all uh, firing on full cylinders and everyone, everyone wants a piece. And I know that you started NFT Origin Stories, a video show and podcast about this space, so you're really familiar with all the different types of NFTs. So I'm hoping that we can kind of put you in the space as professor for this segment and, and kind of teach us a little bit about how we should be thinking about the value of these seemingly nebulous tokens. Uh, so I'm hoping we can start with Beeple. Uh, that NFT is the most expensive one ever, sold for over 69 million. What makes this piece that valuable? It's interesting. For the Beeple comparison, I would actually go to the traditional art market. You know, Beeple is a legacy digital artist. One of the long, He's been at it for his infamous streak of every days. And so I would go to the traditional art market there. It is a, an issue of supply and demand and image and legacy. And in this case, a bit of an outlier. I mean, there was a token associated with it, the B20 token, possibly was pumped up a little further than it should have been. But that's where I'd go for the proxy there. I would look at the Banksy's of the traditional art space and draw the comparison to Beeple. And how much does the visual element play in here? When I think about the art world, you think about how a piece makes you feel and how beautiful it is. Does that matter as much with NFT values? It does. That's one of the major value propositions. Art has value. Art has always carried value in a world art market, 50 plus billion dollars. That will stay true in the digital realm. I mean, digital art is an art form. It's a fairly new form of art, been around for several decades. Primarily, we've seen it. We've transacted with it, even though we don't realize we have. It's been the grand hidden transaction behind companies like Instagram and so on. And now the creatives are coming forth via NFTs directly to the collector, and they're engaging in that same transaction. And wow. it is a bit of price discovery right now. The grand hidden transaction is something that is really going to stick with me. That's super helpful. Uh, I want to talk about the tweet from Jack Dorsey, which went for over $2 million as an NFT. What makes that art and what makes it valuable? Right, I would look at that less as art and more as memorabilia. So mm. who is Jack Dorsey? What is Twitter? What is your belief in Twitter and Jack Dorsey? And how much does that mean to you? I and mean, this is a piece, this is an athlete, right? This is a business athlete and a business platform could be looked as a sports team or sports league. Okay, let's make that comparison to, to memorabilia. So yeah. uh, Beeple Art and, and Jack Dorsey's $2.5 million tweet memorabilia. And would you say the same thing for things like all of the NBA top shot highlights that are getting sold as NFTs? Are those also put into the memorabilia space? Sure, we can go memorabilia. We can also throw in the word collectibles, right? Collectibles, mm. trading cards. I mean, these are a new form of trading card. And we can look to the trading card uh, industry, call it, and say what holds value. So if we go into the weeds there, you know, we are looking at uh, rookies, right? Rookie cards, first appearances, these kinds of things, and special moments that will stand the test of time. So I'd expect those two categories to hold value, while po quite possibly the, the remainder losing value and steam over the long haul. So looking more broadly, it, it seems like from what I'm hearing from you, the NFT space is here to stay and it's only going to get bigger. So what are some of the best practices that we should keep in mind if, if someone is listening who wants to get into buying digital art? So let's go back to those three, those three value propositions, fine art, utility, and access. The wonderful thing about an NFT, different than art, it can do more. It can do more things. You know, an NFT can unlock things in metaverses and digital worlds. It can unlock access components. Gary Vaynerchuk uh, very recently launched his collection, Be Friends, which poked at all forms of access to a human being, time with a human being, let's say conferences with a human being, that's interesting. NFTs can do a lot more outside of the fine art. So I would say pick your lane 
or multiple lanes. What are you passionate about? What do you believe in? Do you want access to a person? Mm -hmm. Do you want the utility of exploring metaverses? Or do you want to stick to the art component? Uh, and there is a lot of richness and depth there. And sticking with your NFTs, what, what makes the NFTs that you are offering valuable? So it, it crosses two lanes within that three value proposition pie. So the first lane being fine art, these are selected digital artists career digital artists. They're here for the right reasons. They're here for the long haul. They have built this space, this crazy space that everyone wants a piece of, everyone wants to be in. These are the people who really did lit and lead the light and lead the way. Mm -hmm. Then we can move to the utility aspect. So we are exploring that. They are creating original artworks for the project that's ca that are character based. Yeah. We're taking the character, we're making that character a virtual sculpture. So think about an old school painting and a sculpture or bust of a character in a painting. Wow. That's what we're doing in the digital realm. These sculptures will be able to travel to metaverses, do all sorts of wonderful things, AR filters, you name it. I think it's gonna be a very special thing. Really quickly in our final couple seconds here, what do you think is the craziest NFT that we're gonna see in our lifetimes? What's the wildest thing that you could imagine becoming an NFT? The, the passing wish or the retiring wish of a massive celebrity who essentially sells their entire brand, all of it, <laughs> in one NFT. Oh my God, Roger. Well, we will uh, bring you back on to talk about the uh, Kardashian brand NFT to come. Really appreciate you joining us. That was so interesting and so helpful. Scarlett, I'm obsessed with this NFT conversation. Do you think it's gonna be a Kardashian or someone else? I feel like it's gonna be someone old school who like hadn't thought about it until now. It's like, now True. I'm all in. That's such a good point. It could be like a 70s rock star NFT. Yeah, like I could see David Bowie's estate or yeah. someone like that doing it. Yeah.